Let's start, if we may, then, with the knees. Ah. Oh. Okay, stand-up comedy. Yes, I like doing that. That's okay. my favourite thing. That seems to be your favourite thing. I, I've, ne I've never seen you actually doing a whole act live, but I've seen some of the stuff on tape, uh, and it struck me as being not only very funny and very inventive, but also it does seem to draw quite directly on your experiences. Yes. I feel like, you know, when something dead embarrassing and humiliating happens to you, to me it happens all the time. It's a constant, incessant... Uh, my life is just embarrassing incidents strung together by telling people about the embarrassing incidents, okay. really. <laughs> so if I'm not here talking about them, I'm out there having them. Having so, them. <laughs> <laughs> I might be reluctant to leave at the end, but I might cling to this, this allegory for authority that you sit behind. Oh, you saw through that, did you? Yeah, it's represents okay. authority. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, when I say you lived a life, uh, let's talk about something. You know, you, right. you had a, a drug problem for many years, or did you not consider it a problem? I got a little bit addicted to heroin. OK, well, that, I think, on most people's scale, seems pretty much a problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the trouble with heroin is, Jonathan, it's a bit moorish. Once you hold start... It, hold it, hold it. It's very difficult. Why do you say heroin like that? Heroin. <laughs> I like to belittle it. I don't recommend it, you know. <laughs> I've not come on here to endorse heroin, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> That'd be a terrible message. Not when I've, I've got to push my main message of tuck your ghoulies between yeah, your legs. Yeah. That's what I'm here to promote. Has that replaced heroin in your life, do you think? I think it has, you know. <laughs> yeah. The, um, the highs, Jonathan, the lows are terrible, but the highs! <laughs> <laughs> when you see it in the mirror and you think, oh, I could be a lady. It's nice. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I've done that quite recently as have well. You? Nothing wrong with that. I might have done it this afternoon. Well, you may have. Yeah, after a bath. Really? After a bath, you've done it? Yeah, well, I don't want to do it before a bath, do I? That'd be impractical and unhygienic, wouldn't it? Yeah. Carrying on in that fashion, you, we, we live local to each other, don't we? Do we? Yeah. Have and you seen me doing it through a window? <laughs> <laughs> as a matter of fact, I have. I think I was inspired to do it by you. And there at night, I thought it was an owl sitting outside. <laughs> so you can see how I made that simple mistake. I wish I had the courage to tell you what that hooting was. <laughs> um, all right, but uh, you've lived a lot. Uh, yeah. As I said, you know, not necessarily things that I would have thought you're, you're particularly proud of sometimes. And you've been arrested quite a few times, haven't it's you? always used to be getting arrested. Well, well, how many times have you been arrested, do you think? I think maybe 11. OK, well, that's... I've never been arrested once. Oh, it's ever such a laugh for a while. I'm sure it is, then. <laughs> yeah. You mustn't take it too seriously. <laughs> You see, I think maybe that's where you had problems in the past. It's not taking too seriously. Ah, uh, yes. What, what was the... Uh, let's deal with the lighter side of uh, the police force. Um, <laughs> what was yeah. the silliest thing you think you were arrested I would have for? to say, Jonathan Ross, that my daftest <laughs> arrest would be this one, what I'm about to speak of now, from my face. Okay. <laughs> uh, right? Is it awful, this anecdote, because of the first sentence to it makes people lose sympathy for me? Okay. Here is the first well, sentence. Well, hold on a second, then. Let me ask you not to judge too harshly. I don't know what this is going to be yet, so I might want to be the first to judge him harshly, but <laughs> before he speaks, let's all give him a chance. Okay. Thank you, Jonathan. Okay. Uh, Mr... So the story begins thusly. Yes. <clears throat> I was stealing porn from an all-night garage. OK. <laughs> but... <laughs> and they can arrest you for that? <laughs> It's a bit draconian, ain't it? <laughs> so who, who caught you? How were you apprehended? Uh, what happened was, I was, like, I was looking up at the pornography, and of course I was on drugs, so I can't be held fully culpable for my actions. Okay. I was beneath what I like to call my drug brella, beneath which <laughs> I can't be damned. Yeah. The drug brella yeah. protects me from condemnation. What, what you're saying is, uh, you, you, you paid the price for that because uh, the drugs themselves were a mistake. Them blooming drugs. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you <laughs> acknowledge nearly the ruin of me. <laughs> you acknowledge that now. And, and you are now, we should point out, you are now a clean and sober individual. Three and a half years clean. Well, congratulations. Three and a half years clean. That's a good thing. Uh, Russell, congratulations. I mean that. I know it must have not been easy, I would imagine. Oh. So let's go back then. Now we've clarified that. You're under the drug brella. Was it called the drug brella? The drug brella. Oh, forgive me. Okay. <laughs> uh, I was neath its shelter. Okay. Sheltering <laughs> under the drug brella. Yeah. Right, I looked up at that pornography and I found it stimulating because it is designed with that in mind. <laughs> I took the pornography, I stuck it in my jacket like that to conceal it from any eventual authority figures who might want me not to have it for nothing nor nothing. <laughs> then I turned round and it was an officer of the law just stood there. He goes, uh, you, better pull that, you better pull that magazine back. Well, that's common sense. Yeah, I took him at his word and immediately placed it back on the shelf. But by now, I'd entered into a dynamic that was going but one way, Jonathan. And, uh, and that way was to the cells. Choking, I calls it. Right? So then, uh, right, he goes, uh, right, stop looking at me, for I were looking at him. 
Yeah. And uh, like well, I sort of that, I took that as an, that seemed like a challenge to me. Russell, I carried Russell, on looking. Russell, Russell, uh -huh. Russell. How were you looking at him? Were you looking at him in a crazed, druggy kind of way, do you think? I was looking at him like I wouldn't mind it having a bit of a cuddle. <laughs> <laughs> Many of us think that we don't get enough cuddles. I uh, feel that, and I think the police sometimes need a little bit of a cuddle, and that's why they get so officious. But he was angry about this cuddle offer. He was cross. He said, if you didn't stop looking at me in that manner, by the time I count to five, I'm going to arrest you. So, he has given you a chance here. <laughs> All right, yeah, but the conditions were very narrow <laughs> and restrictive. <laughs> Given you till five, I think that's fair enough. He could have said three. Well, actually, by three, he was getting quite agitated. Well, <laughs> why so? And that's just as my striptease were rotting up. <laughs> <laughs> that man knows nothing of the narrative of erotic dance. <laughs> so, well done. Like, he, he goes, stop looking at me. One. And I carried on looking at him. And he went, two. I carried on looking at him. He went, three. Three. And then, we know how this goes. Then I went, I love you. <laughs> And he went, you're nicked. And he all arrested me right up nice and tight with handcuffs, took me in the back of his van, left me in Hampstead Police Station just around the corner, so it was a better class than Nick. And then, like, a... <laughs> Thank you very much. What did you get charged with? Attempted theft of a magazine? What's, what's the charge there? Uh, because he considered my behaviour to be erratic and abusive, so it's like abusive to a police officer and drunk and disorderly. Yeah, yeah. I you... said, I was merely offering you love, officer. Uh, but I you... think the crime lies with you. <laughs> you couldn't receive your love. Yeah. If loving all humanity is a crime, you better lock me up and throw away the key. Yeah. <laughs> it might have been the smack use, though, that he got to first, though, Major. Eventually, that was the legal loophole that he got me with. <laughs> <laughs> There's always a loophole, oh. and there are silly drugs. Yeah. Um, OK, uh, another thing I read about you is that you were a, a sex addict. Ooh. Blimey, there's an accusation. <laughs> now, is this... You, you have spoken about this on stage, you have described yourself in these terms. No, I haven't, cos what it is, Jonathan, is, you know, them girls... Girls, yes. their mothers, them what's not us. Hard to resist. I like them. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. It's nothing more complex than that. Sometimes I like a bit of a cuddle or to go out with one on a date, a bit of flirting. But it's a lovely thing. Yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I like girls ever such a lot. But, but do you like them, do you think, more than is perhaps good for you sometimes? I don't know. What would be too much liking girls? Well... Standing outside your window, hooting like an owl, <laughs> just because you're posing with a pretend vagina. <laughs> is that an thing? You know, I so wish I hadn't cut my chest together as well now, because I think that might have tipped you over the edge. That's didn't cemented it. it. <laughs> you like a cuddle. You write like birds and that. I know about it. I love, I love uh, women. I love the look of women. I love the sound of women. I like the shape of women. Yeah. I like the smell of women. I like the feel of women. Yeah. I occasionally like the company of women as right. well. Right, so, and imagine that, but you weren't married and didn't have no kids, like what I am. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> now, not only do I see the method in your madness, but I'm slightly depressed. <laughs> uh, but have you not found someone that you'd want to spend some time with more than just the brief, casual, electric, dynamic tension and then fulfilment of a one night stand? No, I like that last one. <laughs> All that tension. No, Uma, I'm a little bit in love with her. Uma's beautiful, isn't she? Isn't she nice? She's still of ethereal, isn't she? And magical. She is a very beautiful woman, and I would have thought about the right height for you, because you're not a short fella. No, she's, she too looms, didn't we? Have we you... could loom together, the two of us, like great redwood trees, and when we died, it would be like they were falling, like that. Someone would shout timber, and that would be like the, the echo of our final orgasm. We're back... <laughs> we're back to the finality of death again with Russell. I get the feeling that's what colour and informs not just your act, but most of your life. Yeah, it does. The inevitability of death, Jonathan, means we must live every moment as if it were our last, you know, enjoy it a bit. There's only one thing more inevitable than death, I feel. What's that? And that's when your time on that couch comes to an end. Ah, uh, is it approaching, Jonathan? I'm Am afraid... I going back out to the embarrassing place? It's not an embarrassing <laughs> place. <laughs> the world. It's, think well, of it more as a kind of holding pet, uh, as a more of a resting space. <laughs> All, right. All right. I'll just go have a little rest. Russell, uh, what a joy to have you here. I've always nice enjoyed you on TV, but you're, you're funnier in the flesh than I had imagined possible. So congratulations on being a very funny and very talented young Thanks man. Thanks for being so nice to Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Russell Brand. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.